brothers and sisters, we've now entered a holy season of Advent, a time of preparing for Christ's coming. We look back in this season of Advent to Christ coming, his birth among us, great feast of Christmas that we will be celebrating in four weeks. We also look ahead. We look ahead to Christ's final coming in glory, when he'll come as judge, to judge all of us, to judge right from wrong, good from bad, and to grant us the gift of eternal life, to be united with him and his Father and the Spirit for all eternity. And we also look to Christ's coming at the present time, in the daily circumstances of our lives. As a people of faith, we know that Jesus is present with us. He assured us he would be with us for all ages until the end of time. As we prepare for these comings, the Advent season invites us to look carefully at our lives. This reading that we just listened to, St. Paul's letter to the Romans, St. Paul says, now is the moment for you to wake from sleep. The night is far gone, the day is near. It is an image of Jesus, the light of the world, which Paul compares to the new light of a day breaking through the darkness of night. And Paul says, now, now is the time to wake from sleep. It is, as, it is as if the early Christians had fallen asleep in darkness. And now Paul is saying, the day is drawing near. It is time to wake up. Christ is coming. Paul is concerned here that the early Christians have become complacent. Perhaps they were expecting Jesus to come very shortly, and when that was delayed, they became complacent. They had fallen asleep. And Paul is saying, now is the time to wake up. We need to be ready. When Jesus comes, we can't afford to fall asleep. We do not know the hour that he will come. We do not know when to expect him. This morning, as I was having breakfast, actually, Father Vincent Gullikers came to the rectory and he said, Bishop, I'm sorry that I have sad news. Father Dan Rushlow has died. I was completely shocked. There was no indication that Father Rushlow was sick. A few weeks ago he had had an operation, but he was recovering fine. He didn't show up for Mass this morning. People were worried about him. So Father Gullikers went to his house, and he found him sitting in his chair. The television was still on. Father Rushlow had been watching television last night and had died. He did not expect it, I'm sure. None of us expected it. It was a shock for all of us to hear this. We pray for Father Dan, his sudden death, priest who served our diocese very faithfully, priest who suffered in his own life, had many operations, sickness. We pray for him now that he will enjoy peace in God's kingdom. But we're all like Father Dan. We don't know the hour that Jesus will come to us and call us to himself. 
We do not know when to expect him. And Paul is saying here, we need to wake from sleep. We can't afford to be complacent in our lives. We must be ready. The word in, in the Greek text for sleep is hypno. We get the word hypnotized from, from the Greek. Often in this world, we're hypnotized to evil. We're complacent in the face of evil. Last night, our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, had a prayer vigil in Rome at St. Peter's Basilica for all human life. He asked bishops all over the world to join him in praying for the unborn, praying for life. When we look at our society, Pope realizes that abortion is one of those evils that we've just become accustomed to. We no longer are scandalized by it. People just accept it without thinking, without giving it much thought. They just accept it as part of life. We become hypnotized to this evil. And St. Paul recognizes in using this imagery that we have become hypnotized to evil in our own lives. We just become accustomed to it as if it were part of ordinary life. And so, if Paul is saying here, we are to wake from sleep. We can't afford to be asleep when Christ comes to us. What he means by this is that we must lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Live honorably, Paul says, as in the day. If we are serious about preparing for Christ's coming in this Advent season, we need to put aside the works of darkness. Paul is talking here as if we had an old coat on. Paul says we need to cast aside this old coat, this old coat of our sins, of the evil that is accumulated in our life. We need to take it off and cast it aside. And we need to put on a new coat. We need to put on Jesus Christ. Here Paul is giving us an image of our baptism. Baptism, when the child is baptized, we put on a garment, a white garment on the child to signify that the child is now putting on Jesus Christ. It is a child of God. We now must live our baptism. Advent is a time to put aside the works of darkness that have accumulated in our lives and to put on Jesus Christ. Advent is a time to take stock of our lives, to be honest with ourselves, to look into our hearts and to examine them. Have we become accustomed to evil, to the sins in our lives? Have we fallen into bad habits in our lives? We need to look at these during this time of Advent if we're truly preparing for the coming of Jesus. We must cast aside these works of darkness. We must be conscious of the needs of those around us. Often in this Advent season, that's precisely what we do. We're aware of children who may be not able to have presents at Christmas time. We're aware of families that don't have enough food to eat at this time. And we know that we have to reach out to them as disciples of Jesus Christ. Advent then is this time to look seriously at our lives, to shun the works of darkness and sin, and to put on the armor of light. Our ceremony tonight uses the image of Christ, the light. We lit our tapers from the Paschal candle, indicating that the light of Christ breaks into the darkness of our lives. We held up our candles 
as a commitment on our part to live the baptism, the graces that we receive through Jesus Christ. Advent is a time of prayer. We can only prepare for Jesus' coming if we have this attitude of prayer. Paul's concern here is that the early Christians had become complacent. And he says, now is the time to wake up. We need to look at our lives. Have we become indifferent? Especially in our spiritual lives, in our relationship with God. Do we desire to know Christ more fully? Do we want Christ to come into our lives? Will we be ready for him? Will our hearts be even welcome when he comes to us? Advent invites us to prayer, to take time as we are tonight, this beautiful evening prayer, to open our hearts to God. We listened together to the scripture readings. We need to take time to be quiet in our lives, to be attentive to the Spirit. As we listen to the Word of God and ask how God is working in our daily lives. Many of us have the practice of praying the rosary, meditating on the mysteries of Christ, the mysteries of our salvation. Here we follow the example of Mary, a woman of prayer, a woman who was attentive to Jesus, a woman who opened her heart to Jesus' presence. She is our model of prayer as we enter this Advent season. Tonight, as we come before the Lord, hearing Paul's call, we need to wake up, to be present to the Lord who comes into our lives. We gather together to pray that during this Advent season, God will increase our desire, our desire for him, our longing for his coming, Jesus will find a welcome home in our hearts.